Hello everyone, this is Gally and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Your Dragon. Today we're going to learn how to add details to your pieces as requested by one of my um, followers. So I wanted to show you what I do, what process I follow to make the different designs that I make and how to add some of the details that I give them. So first just grab a, a pose that you like. In this case I've chosen this one, it's a little more dynamic than having him standing up doing nothing. So after I went through many poses I decided I wanted this one. So the first step I do is just the sketch. And then the second step will be refining the sketch to make it look more like a, a dragon. So I give him a neck, I start to decide where the wings are going to be, what kind of horns he's going to have, all of that goes into the refinement. I add muscles, I add the paws, and then I create the, the shape of the tail, and so on. Then I decide the shape of the wings, and those things I've already shown in different videos, but this time I'm going to show you the details, the little parts that people often miss when they're drawing. So imagine you already have your creature, right? You've decided you wanted it to be, I don't know, a reptile, or to have fur, or feathered wings, or any kind of, of thing you've decided. Google references. In this case, I looked for metal, and I added, I don't know if you can see that, but I added metal texture. So it's a little subtle, subtle but you can still see it. Like there is the, the metal texture right here. And I'm going to change color so I can show you. So here, you can see that it has a, like a scratched um, texture. This one I made with a brush, just going like this. So, and then you can see the little metal hinges, little dots. And you can see his glowing eyes and glowing parts are all over his body. Then you can see how the wings have a different texture, how the cables are attached to the wings. For example, the tail is a little blurred. So those kinds of things are little details that people will look at but they won't realize they're looking at. So it makes your piece complete and it makes it look even better. So I would suggest you add detail, not a lot, because then it gets lost. For example, if I wanted to add a lot of detail here on this wing, you wouldn't really care for it. Like it's in the background, so it's blurred and it's just a simple color so it doesn't distract the person from looking at this and I blur this and I blur this so the attention stays focused right here I want you to see this you see like this is blurred as well it's important to add details but don't go overboard because then your piece won't be as interesting there are many paintings in the past that have had a lot of details and it's fun when you're in a museum and you can look at it but maybe when you're trying to make for example what I do is concept art when you're trying to make concept art uh, you don't want to have that much detail because the point is to replicate a character once and, and again and again and again many times or for someone else to draw it again and again you don't want it to have that much detail it's just the necessary parts. So now that I covered what the basics are for this, I will start showing you what I do. So we'll hide this again. And we're going to go back to our little drawing here. Let me just resize this one. Okay. So now that you're back in your drawing, and you've seen what I do, for example, in this design specifically, I decided his horns should look like just one part of metal. It should be like this, and it will be comprised of different pieces. And then I decided some of his horns might look like this, like strong metal blades, instead of just spiky things. And I chose him to add the scales 
united like the planes of, a, of an airplane. Like you see, it has little uh, things. This was suggested by a friend. It looks so much better. So when you add these things, you make it look more metallic. And then, for example, the shine. Not everything shines the same way. In the metal. So, those little details, like adding these little things, or making it look like blades or different pieces together, makes it a whole different design, like adding the metal texture and so on. So, this is for this design only. But as you can see, I joined mm, fantasy with sci-fi. So that's that's this one. So now we're going to make a different one. So I'm gonna go with a new one. And I'm going to show you... Oh, sorry. I'm going to show you what happens when you draw a different thing. I know, I'm using the paint bucket. that I killed it. So, this time... We're going to see this other character I made, and the example I will give you is that it's a light dragon. It's supposed to be a good one, peaceful and everything. So, what I've done is I rounded the edges of the wings. So, of course, drawing white won't work. i done something like this with the wings. So, they, they are curved. They're not your usual wings. So it makes them look more, I don't know, angel-like, like soft and nice. Also, their horns are like this, they're rounded. Their tails also look like fins. Like, it's... All the design is based on a peaceful, rounded edges kind of look. Clear colors, little markings. A smile. So, as you can see, the little details do matter a lot. In this case, for example, she's smiling, it's a girl. She has her little pups right here with little hands. Uh, her wings are in a protective stance. Let me show you, maybe you can see that. Like, her wings look like this, like she's pointing towards her little baby and she's surrounding them with her tail so those are details believe it or not including the pose you have details and it speaks volumes of the character you want to make when you make them look a certain way so her personality is calm and protective and that's what you see in this pose so, details also involve what you do with the pose, it's not just what you draw. It's not just what you think details are, like the claws or, or stuff. It's more in the pose, in how they manage the, the expressions and everything. So, this was just a different example, and I'm going to go on with a new one. In this case, is an old one you've seen before. And what I wanted to show you was the things you can make with beautiful references. So again, I'm going to color this. I sucked at using the paint. Okay. Ah, what happened? Oh, okay. So now that I finally managed to get this you see, this one is simple, but he has scales, a lot of them, and texture. So that's another detail, texture. So important, I believe, because texture gives you sense of, of depth. So for example, he has texture here, 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 different scales. This is a different kind of scale, his eyes. So you see, it's not just a simple dragon, you can see the light reflecting from the water, you can see how his eyes are surrounded by different scales, you can see how the horns glow, for example, here, or how this skin is different than this skin here, so you see those are also details. So don't be afraid 
to add more and then remove them. For example, in this case, I did the face, right? And then when I created the eyes, I debated whether to keep these things on or just don't make them. Or for example, I debated how to put the, the fangs, like what kind of fangs I wanted, if I wanted them like this, if I wanted horns here, if I wanted the horns to look like this instead of the way they look. So those are valid uh, things to decide when you're making a, a, a dragon or a design in general. When I make a design, I don't usually say, yeah, this is it. That's how it's going to look. I usually change it many times. What I do is, let me see if I can select this. What I do is I make this again and again and again until I decide which one I like. So I couldn't copy that because I don't know what I did. But you see, imagine you have the other design here. I could have made his nose like this, smaller eyes, many different horns. So I stayed with this design and then after I had the basic lines and everything, I added the details. Don't start adding details before you finish what you want because it's only time consuming and it won't be fun at all when you have to erase them and then start again. So just don't try not to do that. It's not like a do it or not do it, like those videos of do's and don'ts. But it's a suggestion I will give you is don't start details until you decide what you really want. And that's just a tip for me. So after this one, we have this little one here. It's not so little. So, okay. I'll start by filling this. Okay. Oh dear, it takes me a while. Oh, <laughs> I killed it. No, I'm kidding. It's like so, then you see this one is based on a dog. I made this for my uncle. So, his face is a dog, or a canine face. And I added stripes as details. I added a, a claw right here. I will paint over this. So you can see. And as you can see, I added a claw here. He has stripes, he has a dog face, it sounds so funny. His hands are blurred, yeah. So as you can see, I even added the reflection of light. I'm still working on learning those things, but in the meantime you can learn from the details. So grab your reference and edit, add details, add interesting things, but of course don't go overboard. And what I meant with that is, for example, don't make a lot of spikes in your dragon and then go like this and then add more spikes here and then add fur here and then just don't try to put a lot of details. Don't do that. People won't even see them and your drawing will look flat and you don't want it to look flat, you want it to look realistic or cartoony but in, not in an overboard way. No one likes that. I believe I wouldn't like something that went too much, just too much. It's it's a lot to take on. And last but not least, an example. So imagine you have your picture. Imagine you have your beautiful picture right here. And you have your character. And your character looks happy and dandy and everything's okay. And he's alright. But then you want to, I don't know, out of background. And that's okay, you have mountains and sun and clouds. Then you think, no, it still looks empty. And then you start adding trees. And maybe another character over here. And then a bird. And then another bird. And then, you know, you start adding so many things. And then it just looks too much. Like, too much. Don't add a person in the mountain. Sorry, on the mountain looking, I don't know way over there and then tiny little birds and then specks you know why because then your character is just lost there it's, it's lost even if you see him he doesn't have his good space bubble everyone needs a holy space bubble to breathe 
So if you want to add a lot of details, then I would suggest to blur the background if you have Photoshop or any other digital application such like I don't know like this and if you have a tree or, or something close by then make a tree close by and the rest is blurred and then your character pops up and that's that's one of my tips for composition and details so you can have more interesting pieces without sacrificing detail I will suggest doing this just remember that blurring will kill most of your detail, such as these leaves here or this mountain. So don't do overboard detailing here and then blur it. That will be annoying for you. No one else will notice. <laughs> so that's all for now, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked, please subscribe and share with your friends. I hope it works for you. And there's more video every week or every two weeks. Please suggest if you want something or to see something about dragons or any other animal. I'll be happy to help. Bye-bye.